Welcome to this next video, which is also rather impromptu. Um, something I encountered this afternoon, and yeah, I'd like to share it with you. Uh, once again, that's the whole goal of my video series. It's not because I'm some expert. I just want to share with you if I bump my head against something, and maybe you can learn something out of it. Maybe you've already done it. Well, so be it then. Uh, it's nothing earth-shattering, but, um, uh, you know, with all these little uh, detail, one sometimes needs to tiptoe through the tulip. Tulips. More than one tulip. <laughs> right, let's get straight into it. I made a few notes just to explain the scenario. I'm not sure if the title was of any um, use to anybody. <laughs> What the situation is, is um, I made a re request to a supplier for some components, uh, but at that stage the pricing was not known, so he couldn't give me an invoice. So the first, uh, then of course, follows the instruction to the factory. All right, and then the invoice and then the payment. Now, I had this all happened in the same month that at the beginning of the month there was this payment because now, of course, um, he requires some deposit, all right? But now in my bank statement, there's this payment that's not linked to an invoice, all right? So how do you handle that? The invoice only comes later, plus the second payment. So there's really an invoice plus two payments. So it's an invoice, ah, oh, sorry, a payment, invoice, payment, okay? Now, I had this happened in the same month, I suspect one could have played around with the posting dates and payment date and posting date and invoice date and actually um, link the two to the invoice immediately. Um, not sure about that. I must actually maybe just try and enter it like that. Uh, but nonetheless, in my case, it's different months because obviously there's a period that the stuff needs to be made etc etc so it's not a, a, a week or two exercise it's a three or a four week exercise so what I came up with is the following first you raise a purchase order and then you make a payment against the purchase order not against the purchase invoice all right and then once you receive the invoice you create the invoice and you link it to the purchase order which automatically would link in the previous payment and then if you pay, uh, it automatically adjusts the payment to suit the balance. So this is what you can look out for. Um, right, let's get straight into it. <clears throat> I'm going to go to my buying section and raise a purchase order. Uh, there you can see a couple of them I've been practicing before I actually entered <laughs> into my production system. So let's say... Uh, there's a required date tomorrow. Uh, let's just use any supplier. These are, you know, the suppliers and the items and the prices of are really fictitious. It's not the actual, but it shows the principle. Um, so my target warehouse is the stores. Um, I want to order, let's say, a leg module, a leg item, actually. Let's make that... Um, 20 pieces <clears throat> all right and then we add another item the leg cover there we go we make that 20 as well and uh, okay and then just to add in some good measure we add the uh, oops freight and forwarding which we make, let's make that 120. I'll make a different value so you can see in the general ledger later on. Okay, so there's my purchase order. Nothing really other to add. Um, yeah, I'm just going through this. Yeah, it seems fine. All right, so we say save. And we submit that purchase order. All right. So there it goes. Now, 
now you've got your purchase order and now you say you create a payment all right let's say we pay um, the full amount is that let's pay well make a card payment and you can set the accounts the accounts default is correct but now we make a payment of say 400 argument's sake it updates that value all right um, there's 400 allocated and we say on the reference we say deposit and today's date okay let me just scroll a bit up a bit and just double check but I think it's fine right let's go ahead with that and we submit that all right so now we've got a let's just go to my purchase order again now you can see there's my purchase order and if I open that up you can see there's actually a payment against it all right that one there says there's a payment against it and if you click on it you can actually see the payment it's 400 bucks all right so I'm back to my purchase order and uh, it is the right one yeah let's double check <coughs> Yeah, there's the payment against the purchase order. So often you see a payment against the purchase order. So, <laughs> Okay, now you receive your invoice and you use this purchase order to create your purchase invoice. Okay, if you're going to create it separately um, by saying uh, buying purchase invoice, you've just got to be careful to link that payment in. All right. And of course your items now creating it from the purchase order just makes it easier because um, it already has got all the items loaded and the freight everything is fine all right so let's scroll up again let's just double check supplier invoice let's just type some number here and the invoice date is today right we want to update stock our targeted warehouses stores um, those are the units okay and there's my freight and forwarding and now the trick now the trick uh, well we get to the discount again because I want to show you the discount as well um, because in this case there was discount as well talk of a, a transaction that's got everything in it here we go you go to advanced payments and you say get advance paid all right and it'll go and look at um, payment uh, um, entries that's not linked and there's our payment obviously if if there's a uh, more than one I suspect it'll um, give you the option to choose all right I didn't check that maybe you guys can double check that and drop a comment in the comments there somewhere all right but we've got the payment as an advance payment all right and now let's take 3140 as the discount so there's additional discount we say on grand total on the grand total we have not a percentage but a an amount of 3140 31.40 all right and now my grand total is 1600 all right We've got an advance payment of 400, so outstanding is 1,200. Okay, so it actually draws that in nicely. So now we say save the invoice and we submit it. <coughs> cool, and you saw 1,200, so if we create a payment and we say we pay by card, blah, 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 the accounts will be fine there's the invoice and it says 1200 all right so now we just say balance and today's date and there you go and if you just have a quick squiz oh what was that let's just have a look um, the purchase invoice is 18 
Oh, let's just go there for a moment. And then now you see there's two payment entries. So the purchase invoice is 18 and the payment entry is 14 and 15. So it's 14, 15 and 18. Let's just go to our general ledger. And now we search for the purchase invoice. We said it's 18. There it is. So it's 1,600. Uh, 1, uh, 120 was the freight and forwarding. So the um, the actual stock in hand is 1,480. You'll notice that the stock in hand includes the discount. All right. Initially, I thought uh, that's not right. It must go and lie, lie in the discount account. But if you purchase stock at a reduced price, that's the correct valuation. So if you look in the st stock ledger, you will see this is the value entered, and it is in fact correct. All right. So 14 and 15. Let's just look at the 14 payment. There's the 14 payment, which is the 400 rand, and the 15 payment is the 1,200. Right, so it did actually handle it quite correctly. Well, that was a transaction with quite a few entries. Uh, hope you guys learned something out of it and can apply it, apply it in your own situation.